Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, jealousy is a power, powerful emotion. Marriages are harmed by it. Couples split up and divorce because of it. People are abused, even murdered in some cases out of jealousy. If you remember in Genesis, the first murder occurred when Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous because God had received his offering. It was offered with the right attitude. You know, pride and jealousy are very close, I think. The Israelites fell away from God because of jealousy. There's also a good kind of jealousy, if you will, and that's God's kind. Do not worship any other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God, from Exodus 34, verse 14. Think of those who have been jealous for your best interests. Mom and dad, maybe your grandpa or grandma, your pastor. Thank God that they were jealous for you. And you parents, aren't you jealous for your children? Don't you want the best for them, the best well-being for them? There are two kinds of jealousy. There's an old legend that's told of two brothers who lived together in perfect harmony for many, many years with never a quarrel. And as we've seen many times in movies, and I, I always think of, when I think of genies, I think of I Dream of Genie. I can't help that because I grew up with that program. Some of you probably did too. But anyways, a genie, a magic genie, appears to these brothers, and he says, I'm not going to give you three wishes or I'm not a whole bunch of wishes like Genie did on I Dream of but just one wish, one wish, and you have to make the wish before the sun goes down, or that's it, the wish is gone. The youngest brother has to make the wish in this situation, the genie says. Well, as they're getting there, they're debating, you know, boy, oh boy, you know, the sky's the limit, right? I mean, we got only one wish, so we better make it good, you know. But he, the genie said, now remember, he said, there's one catch, though. He said, there's a catch to this one wish. And he says, that is, whatever the younger brother wishes for, the older brother gets twice as much. <laughs> well, it gets close, and, and it's just about time for the sun to go down. And the older brother's getting really upset, and he grabs the younger brother by the neck, and he starts choking him. He says, make that wish. Make it right now, or we're not, it's going to be gone. So the younger brother says, I wish to have only one leg. Jealousy's ugly, isn't it? It's ugly. It's an ugly thing. You know, it's possible. It's possible for one person in your family to receive a special blessing that doesn't take anything away from the rest of you, but actually adds to your blessings from God. Isn't that possible? I believe it is. You know, there's destructive jealousy out there, jealousy towards others. The story of our parable. The urgency of getting the grapes out. And believe me, at that time, a normal workday was not 8 hours or even 10 hours. It was 12 hours. 12 hours was a normal workday. And workers were hired at staggered times in our parable. One <coughs> denarius was the normal agreement at that time period for a full day's work. But there's apparent inequality here in the parable. The early birds are steamed, if you will. We can put it that way. They're ready to register agreements with the union steward, but of course, ah, at that time, there were no union stewards, so there's no one to file agreements with, you know. Um, so, you know, they're very upset in this situation, and there's no one to talk to except the master. And I don't know about you, there's a lot of uh, jealousy out in the world, a lot of unfairness. I don't know how you feel about professional athletes. I've always had a hard time with the fact of what professional athletes are paid. The people who are out there, the nurses and the doctors and the police officers and the people who lay block and the people who build houses and the people who repair all of our stuff, right? The people who keep the world, the plumbers and everyone who works hard, electricians, the people who work for the gas company, all these people are the people who keep our world going, you know, drive the trucks out there, right? To deliver everything to us. They're all very important people and yet somebody who can throw a ball or can run a ball or can catch or hit a ball gets paid millions of dollars. I don't get it. 
Because think about it. You can take that now. It's nice to have the entertainment, but you take it away. Is that going to change the world that much? I don't think so. But that's part of the world, right? And the way things are, unfortunately. You know, you have to remember that at this time during Jesus' time, it was a subsistence economy. That's what it was, a subsistence. If a man didn't work a certain day, his family didn't eat that day. It was that simple. You know, there's constructive jealousy out there too, jealous for others. The owner addresses the discontented man, right, in a conciliatory way. He says, friend, I'm not being unfair with you. And then he speaks kindly to him, but firmly. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? See, it's all in the eyes, I think. We aren't told about the owner's eyes in this parable. But I can only imagine what those eyes look like in this situation. We are told that he confronted the man with his jealousy. You know, you have to ask yourself, are you diseased? Are your eyes diseased so that you project evil intent on me because I choose to be generous? The master would say. You know, jealousy can be a green-eyed monster. I mean, how many of you have seen families Okay, who got along for years until the father and the, both the mother and father pass away, right? And there's stuff to inherit. And people get ugly. They get ugly. And they, you know, fight and scrap over the things that, you know, that they want, the worldly things that they want, to the point where it ends up and aunts and uncles won't speak to each other. Brothers and sisters, in a lot of cases, don't speak to each other because of such things. I mean, how ludicrous, right? But it's out there. We've seen it, all of us. Jesus said this. He said, if your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. You know, I remember when I started out as a pastor. I, I know it's not totally wrong. It's, it's in the parable as well. You know, pay the worker what he is worth. That's in the parable also. But that's not really the deep meaning of this parable that is told by Jesus here. That's not what it's about. It's actually about how we look at God and each other. That's more what the parable is about. Are we thankful to God and look to Him in faith and gratitude? Or are we jealous of those who make deathbed confessions? I caught myself even doing that when I first started out as a pastor. You know, I watched some people who lived just any way that they wanted to live. And then a few hours before they de for their death, they made a deathbed confession to the Lord. And if it's sincere, right, it happens, God will forgive them and they're saved. And I was kind of jealous of that. And you think about our world. The people who go out there and do what's right. Think about in school, for instance. Ask the principal about the good kids who went through school who had like a B plus average. How many of those kids can you remember their name? Probably none. You're right, Paul. Probably none. What about the troublemakers? Oh, I can remember all the troublemakers' names, right? Because they had to deal with them regularly. And in our world, they take troublemakers and they make them into heroes. Don't they? They do it a lot. In movies and television. Uh, people who are evil are, are good grief. I mean, it's crazy, but that's the world we live in. You know, God has the right, people, to save who he wishes. He is God, right? He can save whoever he wishes. You know, God felt so strongly about our plight as sinners that he would rather give up his only son than to see us destroyed by sin from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Jesus portrays the owner of the vineyard as also being jealous for the healing of the eyes, right? The eyes of those early birds. Jesus heals the blind man in Mark chapter 8, verse 22, in two stages. And after the first stage, he can see people faintly looking like trees. And then eventually his vision becomes completely clear. His sins are forgiven as well. Sometimes, you know, our spiritual eyesight is in the process of being healed. Jesus is jealous for the complete healing of our eyesight, or maybe I should say our insight might be better, right, as Christians. 
On October 25, 1517, six days before Luther gave his 95 theses to the world, he delivered a sermon in the chapel of the castle of Duke George the Bearded in Dresden, Germany. And he said this in part. This is very much condensed because Luther didn't do anything in a few words, usually. Okay? Not in sermons, definitely. Um, but uh, basically he said this. Our salvation must ever remain, he said, our foremost concern. Man can obtain it only through the faith that he has in Jesus Christ, not by his own good works, exclamation point. Well, the gospel he spoke, I have to tell you, was, was very much clearly and powerfully comforting to struggling sinners. And later that day after dinner, the Duke asked Barbara Gonzala, his wife's friend, how did you like Brother Martin's sermon today? And she says, oh, oh, she said, it was, it was just wonderful. She said, I, if I could just hear one more like it, she said, I'd be ready to go to heaven right now. The Duke did not feel the same way. He said, I would pay much money to not, he said, have heard the sermon, because he said, I think it makes people comfortable, he said, in their sins. Can you hear the jealousy in his voice? Does the gospel make us reckless when we hear it? I don't believe the true gospel of Jesus Christ is like that. I believe it changes us from people sick with jealousy to people who have gladly worked for love, the love of God that he has provided in Christ that we may freely receive. We are receiving that love. This very moment is coming down to us through the, Holy, from, through the Holy Spirit from God to us right now during this service. And it will continue to keep us alive through eternity. When God reigns, you see, God's people are transformed by love. And then I want to remind you what it says in our Old Testament lesson, our epistle. Our Old Testament lesson, Isaiah 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. And then from Philippians chapter 1. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God the Father. People, I beg of you, please be joyful in the love that you receive in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, not in perceived fairness in this world, because you know what? There is no fairness in this world, and there is no absolute justice either. It doesn't exist, because the people who administer it are sinful. It does not exist. We as Christians, though, we have a sight that others do not have. We have insight through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are able to see that we get a small glimpse through God's Word of what fairness is all about. And we also can be joyful in the love that we receive from God as well. And we get a glimpse of that as well before heaven. And then one day when we go home to heaven, we will have it completely revealed to us. Just think about that. Think about that today as you go out. Be joyful in the love we receive in Christ, not in perceived fairness. In Jesus' precious name.